So, we got one week left until the new MX vs. ATV game drops, and I genuinely couldn't be more excited. My name is Mentos, and we're going back three generations of console to the PS2 and the original Xbox, where this all started. It only makes sense to make this video considering the next installment of the franchise will be releasing next week on June 28th. By the way, when the new game comes out, please make sure to go check out my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Mentos. I'm going to be live playing that game when it fully releases. I'm going to be playing the hell out of it. The MX vs. ATV franchise has been going on for almost 25 years, which is absolutely crazy. It's just hard to wrap my head around this whole thing. Another thing I must say is the franchise as a whole always picks some of the best in-game soundtracks. I know there are some motocross racing games that came out before the MX vs. ATV game, like MX Trilogy with Ricky Carmichael and ATV Off-Road Fury, but the MX vs. ATV name wasn't solidified just yet, so I won't count those games prior. This is one of the first racing games I really fell in love with alongside playing Need for Speed Underground 2, from the mechanics, it wasn't one of those games you could simply hold the gas down. There was a technique trying to hit doubles, triples, or even quads for that matter. The only reason this series was even made was THQ was working on the MX Trilogy at the time, and asked Sony, who was working on the ATV Off-Road series, if they wanted to collaborate on a project, and here we are today. Starting off way back in 2005, Unleash came out with fresh track for Supercross and Nationals alongside having a career mode. With this being the first game, I thought they would have missed out on something, but in all honesty, they didn't skip a beat. They hit the nail on the head with every single thing. For the time, the mechanics were very good, just using a single analog stick, having complete control of your rider, and you never feel out of the loop. It's hard to say anything bad about this game because this is the setup for all the games to come in the future. One thing you could not forget about was reaching the end of the map and being flung back across the map at Mach Jesus. I know Unleashed had a very, very short segment, but it's very hard to talk about that game when it has such a basis for the whole MX franchise. Moving on to 2007 with Untamed, this is actually the last single stick analog MX vs. ATV game, which is wild to think about, and we're taking a step up to the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 with this one. The seat bouncing in this game always looked like a double jump, which I kind of thought looked funny, but that doesn't take away from the fact that this is a great game. The game felt super open with the turns, and one of the biggest things that set you away was the scrub boost. The small extra boost you got could change the game entirely. The game even had like monster trucks and off-roading vehicles, nationals, super supercross races. It had everything. While waiting for the race to load, you could even drive around in a little practice area. Just like its predecessor, the free ride mode was great. And remember the big bridge? Remember the big bridge that you could jump across and you could just just fly across it was pr easily one of the most fun things to do on top of the regular just playing the maps it was easily one of the most fun things to do in that game i remember being a kid sitting on the ground with the controller in hand looking up at the tv just trying to launch every vehicle across onto the other side of the bridge that, that's a memory that just sticks out in my head whenever I think about that game. In my opinion, that is the OG bridge. So, Skate 3, I'm sorry, you're going to have to take a seat from that one. No disrespect. This might come as a shock, but I really did not play Reflex. I kind of skipped out on Reflex and moved on to the next game. But there's a big toss-up between Reflex and Alive for which is the better game. After going back and playing Reflex, there was a lot on the line with this game considering it was the first game to introduce the rider Reflex or the right thumbstick. So instead of just turning with the left thumbstick, you would turn with both. If you got hit, you can push up on the thumbstick whatever direction you got hit. And you could try to save yourself. And this is a game that did not have a preload at all. Whenever you leaned back on your bike, you didn't actually get that orange boost there, or that orange spring. And because there was no preloading in the game, you had to hit every single section perfect. You could not mess up. You pretty much just had to brake, slow down, and then gas at the right area and make your jumps perfect. Another reason people call this the GOAT game, which I still have yet to agree with, uh, is because on PC, I don't know if this was on consoles, because I didn't really see it, 
but on PC, there were custom map builders. So being able to go on and download custom maps just made the game that much better. You could go on and play anything that people uploaded. People were making monster tracks. They were like mimicking other tracks that have been raced on before, but aren't actually in the game. Bear with me for a live because this game out of all the other MX versus ATVs, I have played this the most. I believe this is the game I have the most play time. The biggest thing for me is there were only two DLCs for this game's whole life cycle, which it just flipped the whole game on its head and made the game feel very, very repetitive for the maps that we had. After level 25, you unlock every single map in the game, but the level cap doesn't end there. It ends at level 50. There was no real career mode in the game. That's why this game has me love it and hate it at the same time. It's just kind of like whatever races you had unlocked, you would complete those races again and again and again to progress your bike, to progress your character, your unlocks, and everything of that nature. And here's one thing, I will admit, this game was very difficult. It wasn't one where you could just pick up and just start ripping and shredding immediately. Your momentum is the biggest thing because if you landed one jump awkwardly, you're punished beyond belief. Not to say that it didn't happen in the other games, but even in All Out, you could clutch boost. Like the second you land, if you land awkward, you could clutch boost and raise your gear and that got you right back up to speed. The free roam in the game was actually pretty cool, even finding one hidden vehicle in each map, even in the DLC map of James Stewart's compound. Speaking of James Stewart, his little cameo cutscenes were cringeworthy, but it made the game that much better. Well, it looks like you're not a rookie anymore. I hooked you up with some new tracks and even got you some new bikes. The bikes are faster and the tracks are harder. So take it easy for the first few laps out there. Man, you learn fast. You're starting to look like a pro. Keep riding like this, you'll be on the gate with me in no time. This game was an absolute grind to rank up your bike and having a perk system. Yes, there's a perk system in this game. You were able to select two perks that would enhance your racing ability, where if you had Wrecking Ball on, you were just an absolute menace on the track. Whole Shot Master for double XP off the whole shot if you got first in that. And a few others like Scrub Master, which made it easier to throw the fattest whips and scrubs off jumps which is probably one of the reasons i love this game so much you could just completely throw yourself sideways and whip it back like it's nobody's business moving on to probably the most hated mx versus atv game of all time is mx versus atv supercross the biggest thing for this game was considering it's in the name it was only supercross tracks i believe they had like maybe one or two national tracks game had a decent amount of assets from untamed and alive which would be the james stewart compound they also did like a remaster anniversary edition of this game which i never played but apparently it was a lot better it had grand view from alive as well so it took another aspect from that game based off other people's opinions they said they always felt super slippery and they could never keep the bike under them like going through the whoops or just trying to make like a slight turn they always just the bike just slid out from under them i'm not saying that makes it a bad game by all means but if this game and alive are combined with the amount of supercross maps that are in this game and the amount of national tracks that were in alive and when they did supercross tracks in alive they did them right but if they combined supercross which came out in 2014 and alive which came out in 2011 that that would have been an incredible game one thing they need to add which i'm praying they do this for the next game that comes out next week legends please add a track editor i want to play some custom tracks moving on to mx versus atv all out which came out in 2018 all out is like one of those packs of sugar cookies that you get at the supermarket either you're going to enjoy the game off the rip or you're not going to have a good time because everything just continues to go wrong personally i've had this happen so many times where I'm just absolutely tanking through and wrecking the lobbies and then I could just miss one jump and it screws up your whole run. This was one game like the others where you just can't pick it up and automatically be good. Sure, you could hit your doubles, triples, quads, but you're not obviously going to hit those off the rip because you have to progress your bike up. This game wasn't really set to have a career mode. It was just kind of a series of races that you would do 
and that is how you unlocked further gears for money for your bikes for progression for everything even before the dlc there was a solid amount of content even after the dlc i don't know if this game's still being supported considering legends is coming out in a week once again i don't know how many times i'm gonna say that but the game when it was in its prime so to say it had a great amount of content. The DLC maps were great, and this game, you could actually get extremely technical with your chassis, your suspension, being able to tweak every little thing with like a menu bar, so if you want it looser or tighter. The only two things I will say with this game is the second your vehicle left the ground, you could whip it in any direction. You could throw a fatty whip left, but if you don't know how to operate your vehicle in the air, you're going to struggle and you're going to have issues trying to get it back facing where you want to go on the track, aka go forward. <laughs> this is one of the few games I actually ran online in and online ran perfectly fine. But the one thing I wish they would cut down was the wait times in between races. I could probably go downstairs, get a bottle of water and make a sandwich, eat that sandwich, and then the next race would be loaded up. But besides that, All Out was all in all a good game moving on to mx versus atv legends the one thing i will say moving on to legends i know absolutely nothing about this game i haven't looked at any gameplay i did load up and i saw a screenshot of how the layout of the uh, miles per hour and the speedometer and all that how that looks but i haven't actually watched gameplay so we'll see how it is in about a week and i will be doing a follow-up video talking about legends if I enjoy the game, did it live up to the hype? Because I have been looking forward to this game for I don't even know how many months now. I appreciate you guys stopping by and checking out the video. If you want to see more videos like this, please let me know what ideas you want to see in the future. And in the comments, drop a comment with what your favorite MX versus ATV game is. Like I said, I'm going to say it's the final time before I sound like a broken record, but I probably am already. Please check out the Twitch because I'll be live when that drops. And also, I'm live most nights just hanging out, talking to chat. So if you guys want to come in and say hi, feel free. Stop by. But um, I will see you guys in the next video, whenever that is. Most likely around the release of Legends, maybe a couple days after. But appreciate you guys coming out. Sadios.